Hi everybody, it's Jason from the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel and also on Rumble and we are going further into our book called Vain Traditions. And for anybody who has not seen the first several parts of the Vain Traditions, I will link this up in the description below. This is a very, very good reading. Unfortunately, it was distributed by people who were a bunch of criminals. And so if you're looking for a hard copy of this, you're not going to want to actually buy this unless your money's going to end up in the hands of the criminals, which is why we have provided a free PDF in the description below as well. You guys can download this. And we had hundreds of downloads of Vain Traditions uh, since we started this. So there's been a lot of people that have been very much interested in this and the reading of this. And so we will continue on today and we will begin in birthdays. And here we go with birthdays. As we have seen from scripture, the actual birth date of Yahushua and let me preface this by saying that for those who have not seen any other of these readings, we say Yahushua as Jesus the Christ because there were no J's in Hebrew. The letter J was not invented until the year 1500s. There's somewhere in the 1500s, like 1529 or 1524, somewhere in there, the actual letter J was, was given to us in our alphabet. Prior to this, we didn't have the letter J. And in Hebrew, there's absolutely no letter J. So a Hebrew man's name would have not been called Jesus. It was called Yahushua. And so this is who we are talking about. So let's begin again. As we have seen from scripture, the actual birth date of Yahushua, the Messiah is not even recorded in scripture and can only be estimated. If we are not even commanded to celebrate the birth of the Messiah, then what right do we have to indulge in self-gratifying celebration of one's own birth? The facts are, no one in scripture is recorded to have celebrated their birthday except for those of foreign pagan nations. Pharaoh, Genesis 40, 20, and Herod, Matthew 14, 6. Most of the traditions surrounding a birthday celebration are associated with paganism and worship of false gods. Birthday traditions are not only rooted in pagan practice of astrology, but Egyptian pharaohs ordered businesses to close on their birthdays and gave enormous feasts. He was considered the incarnate son. In ancient Greece, wealthy males joined birthday clubs composed exclusively of men who shared their birthday, celebrating monthly with a feast. Persian noblemen observed their birthdays with a barbecue and serving hundreds of small cakes to celebrants. After one's own birthday, the two major satanic holidays are Walpurgisnacht and Halloween, Anton LaVey. That's from the Satanic Bible, September 1st, 1976, page 96. So this is all from anybody who does not know who Anton LaVey is. Anton LaVey was one of the main reasons the Church of Satan even exists. He's the, he's the, he's the guy that invented a tremendous amount of the stuff, brought it to a religion that people actually celebrate. So he's talking about whatever wall Perginex and Halloween, those are, those are uh, satanic. And then at the expense of birthdays being celebrated, and I don't know if it's going to go into this, but in the book of Job, when they were celebrating birthdays, the entire houses fell on, killed all the kids of Job. So probably more reason to consider not celebrating birthdays and idolizing our children like this. Birthdays were considered a time when the bad spirits, as opposed to the good spirits, were able to harm you. As this day changed a person's life, it was believed that the only way to keep the bad spirits at bay was to have your friends and family around you so that their good wishes and present giving would keep them at bay. Saying happy birthday to friends and loved ones was society's superstitious way of protecting them from evil spirits. Birthday thumps, bumps, pinches, etc. were said to bring, big, bring luck and send away evil spirits. Party snappers, horns, and other noisemakers were also intended to scare off bad luck spirits. The custom of lighting candles originated with people believing that the gods lived in the sky, and by lighting candles and torches, they were sending a signal or prayer to the gods so they could be answered. When you blow out the candles and make a wish, it is another way of sending a signal and a message. The lighted candles for the, birth for the cake also may have originated from the birthday of the Greek moon goddess Artemis, honoring her every month with moon-shaped honey cakes. Because the moon glows with light, the cakes were decorated with lighted candles. Also take note that candles are a ritualistic part of nearly every one of the pagan celebrations covered. Jeremiah 7, 18. The children are gathering wood. The fathers are lighting the fire. And the women are kneading their dough to make cakes for the sovereigns of the heavens and to pour out drink offerings to other mighty ones to provoke me. That's from Jeremiah 7, 18. Now this takes us into the truth or traditions. What are we supposed to be keeping? What does the Bible actually say that we should be keeping? So here we go. It's Yahuwah or your way. While Christianity is celebrating holy days of pagan origins, which are nowhere found in scriptures, 
When we do examine the word, we find numerous references in both covenants to festivals given by Yahuwah as a command that have been celebrated by true believers for more than 3,000 years. They are taught and observed in both covenants, kept by ancient patriarchs as well as the apostles and Yahushua the Messiah himself, yet remain a near total mystery to the world. How can this be? Throughout history, mankind has displayed a rebellious attitude toward anything Yahuwah tells us to do. Throughout scriptures, we read of Israel constantly being swayed by the nations around them and copying their traditions despite being warned not to do so many times. Leviticus 18.3, Deuteronomy 12.30, 2 Kings 17.15, Jeremiah 10.2. Nowhere in the list of days to keep found in Leviticus 23, Exodus 12, Deuteronomy 16, and elsewhere do we see any of today's popular holidays. We would rather make our own rules for life and worship, unbound by scriptural do's and don'ts. On top of this, we now have a society with hundreds of years of tradition that everyone assumes is commonplace. No one ever asks, do you keep Christmas? They just assume you do as most everyone else, and to go against this tradition is already a huge obstacle for most believers. In the case of Christmas, for example, those who refuse to buy into the story and the tradition are labeled as a Scrooge, thanks to popular media or fun spoilers. The key to true worship is honoring Yahuwah according to his commands, worshiping in truth as well as in spirit. John 4.23 says this, But the hour is coming and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father also seeks such to worship him. We are presented the same decision as ancient Israel. Keep Yahuwah's days as commanded or ignore them and follow the inventions and conventions of man. Today's religious leaders completely disregard the fact that Yahushua the Messiah his apostles and all the believers in the New Testament observe the very days found in Leviticus 23, and they will keep them again in the new heavens and earth, as in prophecy. Zechariah 14, 16 through 19 says this, And it shall come to pass that all who are left from all the Gentiles which came up against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to bow themselves to the sovereign, Yahuwah of hosts, and to celebrate the festival of Sukkot. The fact begs another question. If the scriptural days were kept by the early believers and will be kept in the new heavens and earth, why shouldn't they be observed now? Yahushua kept the festivals and scripture commands us to walk as he walked. 1 John 3, 6, and that he left us an example to follow. 1 Peter 2, 21, shouldn't we be following it? It is appalling for, appalling for those who seek the truth, who seek the truth cannot get the truth from religious leaders who are supposed to be guiding them into it. Instead, they are left feeling rebuked whenever they inquire about why the church ignores the Kodesh days commanded in Scripture. Ezekiel prophesied of this very thing. Ezekiel twenty two twenty six, Her Kohinim, which are priests, have done violence to my Torah, and they profane my Kodesh, which is holy matters. They have not distinguished between the Kodesh and profane, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Shabbatoth, and I am profaned in their midst. Again, Shabbat doth, for those who do not know, is the Shabbat. It's the seventh day. If one seriously studies the scriptures with an open mind, it will be quite clear that mainstream Christianity is ignoring some of the most important truths of scripture, Yahuwah's laws. While preaching how unnecessary Yahuwah's scriptural festivals are, the Christian church venerates and celebrates with zealous enthusiasm the popular pagan holidays that are completely missing from the word. So what will it be? Holy days or Kodesh days? Do you love tradition more than truth? Is your desire to please people or to please Yahuwah? It's your choice. And so are the consequences of what you choose. These are Yahuwah's appointed times. Leviticus chapter 23. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yisrael and say to them, The appointed times of Yahuwah, which you are to proclaim as Kodesh gatherings, my appointed times are these. Sabbath. Six days work is done. But the seventh day is a Shabbat of rest, a Kodesh gathering. You do no work. It is a Shabbat to Yahuwah in all your dwellings. These are the appointed times of Yahuwah, Kodesh gatherings which you are to proclaim at their appointed times. Now, when we have the Sabbath day, nobody keeps the Sabbath day. Everybody has replaced the seventh day for Sunday, the day of the sun. And we've talked about this in parts one, two, and three about this ad nauseum. So when you replace the Sabbath day for a day that is not your creator's, you are doing things your way. The, pa the, the seventh day is something that we should be keeping for all generations. It's for all of us. 
but yet everybody goes shopping on a Saturday, right? And it's not a Saturday. It's not the day of the sun. It is the seventh day. We were never, ever told to have weak names. Passover. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, between the evenings, is the Pas Pesach, Passover to Yahuwah, of unleavened bread, the other, another festival. And on the 15th day of this month is the festival of Matzah to Yahuwah. Seven days you shall eat, you eat unleavened bread. On the first day you have a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work. On the seventh day is a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work. Here's another appointed time. The weeks, Shavuot. And from the morrow after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you shall count for yourselves seven completed Shabbat off. Until the morrow after the seventh Shabbat, you count 50 days. Then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahuwah, and on this same day you shall proclaim a Kodesh gathering for yourselves. You do no servile work on it, a law forever, in all your dwellings, throughout your generations. Here's another appointed time, trumpets. And of course they have a guy over here with a shawl on, which is Jewish, which is uh, what you don't want to be. You do not want to be Jewish. You don't want to be part of another man-made religion that brings out a horrible, horrible evil things. So this is Yom Tara, Rosh Hashanah. And again, Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish way of saying this as well. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yisrael, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a rest, a remembrance of blowing the, of trumpets, a Kadesh gathering. You do no servile work. The Day of Atonement is another point in time. It's called Yom Kippur in the Hebrew side. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, On the tenth day of this, this seventh month is Yah HaKippurim. It shall be a Kodesh a gathering for you, and you shall afflict your beans and shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. And you do no work on that same day, for it is a, it is Yon HaKippurim to make atonement for you before Yahuwah your Elohim. For any being who is not afflicted on that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. And any being who does any work on that same day, that being I shall destroy from the midst of his people. You do no work, a law forever, throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It is a Shabbat of rest to you. And you shall afflict your beans on the ninth day of the month at evening. From evening to evening, you observe your Shabbat. Here's another point in time. Feast of Booth, Sukkot. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yisrael, saying, On the fifteenth day of this week, seventh month, is the festival of Sukkot for seven days to Yahuwah. On the first day is a Kadesh gathering. You do no servile work. For seven days you bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. Then we have the great eighth day, Shimni Atzareth. On the eighth day, there shall be a Kodesh gathering for you, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. It is a closing festival. You do no servile work. These are the appointed times of Yahuwah, which you proclaim as Kodesh gatherings. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you gather in the fruit of the land, observe the festival of Yahuwah for seven days. On the first day is a rest, and on the eighth day, a rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of good trees, Branches of palm trees, twigs of leafy trees, and willows of the stream, and shall rejoice before Yahuwah your Elohim for seven days. And you shall observe it as a festival to Yahuwah for seven days in the year, a law forever in your generations. Observe it in the seventh month. Dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Yisraelites dwell in the booths, so that your generations know that I made the children of Yisrael dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Thus did Moshe speak of the appointed times to the children of Yisrael. So with that, everybody, this will be a short segment. We will leave it at this. We have our birthdays pagan. Yes, absolutely. Is Christmas pagan? Absolutely. Is Easter pagan? Absolutely. These are the festivals right here that our creator has told us to keep. He has never told us to keep a birthday. He has never told us to keep Christmas. He's never told us to keep Hanukkah. He never told us to keep Easter. He never kept told us to keep Thanksgiving. None of these, every one of these days are pagan. So if you're looking for what our creator wants from all of us, the beginning of the appointed times is a week, is a, is a day that begins every single week. It's called the Shabbat. It is the seventh day of the week is the day of rest. And so if you guys are looking for the kingdom to come, if you are looking for the way that our creator wants us to obey, the way he wants us to live our lives, the way he wants us to treat others, it is all found in the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then if you want the complete picture, then pick up the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You don't need anything other than nine books to figure out the path of the kingdom. And if you take things outside of those books and you're breaking Torah, you're breaking Deuteronomy 4.2, which says not to take away or not to add to the Torah. 
and all of these appointed times that we have, including birthdays, are pagan. Have a good day.